What's going on YouTube, Steven the Salon Guy here and in today's video, we're going to be making over this mannequin right here, this haircut. And uh, I want you guys to get a good look at it now. It's already got a pretty cool kind of bob haircut, but I really want to take this to the next level and transform this look into something uh, a little more edgy, a lot more layers, leaving some of the length, uh, really taking up the shape back into here and uh, removing a bit of the weight. So I'm ready to go. Let's get started. All right, so before I start this haircut, something I'm really excited about are these new haircutting combs, all right? Now, I've been using the same haircutting comb for quite some time. The combs I use are a bit on the longer side. I just like to have that extra length to have more control. And I was paying a lot of money for the haircutting combs that I was using. And I got tired of paying so much darn money for each comb. So what I've done is I did a little research and I found out, uh, I, I found a company who could basically replicate the same combs, a uh, slight difference, but I am proud to say that I now am gonna be selling these hair cutting combs on my website. A link in the description, uh, in the description to where you can purchase them on my website is there. So it's free shipping and I'm doing $8.99. So $8.99, this is ABS plastic. So although it's plastic, it's uh, not cheap plastic. And trust me, I did my research and I wanted to make sure that this was gonna be good quality. So I've tested these and you know, these are what I'm gonna be using. They're pretty much an, an identical replica of the comb that I was using before, except the, uh, the texture is, and the material is a little bit different. Um, again, this is ABS plastic. So, if you're interested, if you want to use the combs that I use now, which are you know professional hair cutting combs for your own personal use or whatever, you can now purchase them. And I have one in red and one in white. So again, you always want to map out your haircuts and you want to make sure you have a clear vision of where you want to go. And what I'm planning on doing is I want to main, retain some length in through here, but I want to create a lot more layering in through here and bring up the length a little bit. So. Uh, so this kind of all works shorter into longer, the longest point being in the front here, but I really want to make this have a lot of movement so it could be kind of uh, cut, or I'm sorry, styled in a variety of different ways. So a lot of times you want to start with the base length. I actually like where the base length is already. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to actually be starting our first section right into the nape area, and I'm going to be holding it straight out from the head like this and we're gonna be cutting straight down palm to palm. We're gonna go all the way down to the very, very base, right in through here, so that this is all kind of connected. And I'm gonna take horizontal sections, and I'm gonna work literally in the nape area for the majority of the beginning of this haircut. Obviously, we're gonna start in the bottom and work our way up. And you know what, what, what this really is doing, it's, it's setting up our guidelines for how long the layers are going to be. Because really that's what's gonna make the entire shape is how long, are, how long or how short the layers are, which is really, really, really important in any haircut. So now what I'm doing is I'm essentially standing in the same position I was, and now I'm again cutting palm to palm, but I'm cutting upwards this way as you can see. And now I'm just going to hold this straight out and cut it all horizontally, just to make sure that we're all balanced right in through here, moving forward. And, and literally, we're gonna be moving upwards from the nape all the way up to the top. And you know, body position is very important. Being consistent is very important. Once again, there's my guide, and now I'm cutting straight down like that. Now, I'm probably gonna get questions, you know, am I over-directing? back towards the center. I'm not really over directing at all. I'm just pulling it pretty much straight out. The only time I'm gonna be, I don't wanna say over directing, but the only time we're gonna be maintaining a bit of the, the length or the weight is going to be in the corner right in through here. Here we go again on this side. I'm also using the wide teeth of the comb. I just wanna make sure this has a bit more texture to it. Uh, the, the wide teeth you know, it's still gonna cut evenly, but I always find that the wide teeth just gives it a slight bit more texture as far as the hair goes. 
All right, and, and as far as the, the cut, I, I, I do tend to use the fine teeth a lot, but I do that when I'm, I'm doing a bit more precise kind of you know, layering. Maybe we'll do that when we get to the top, or maybe we won't, you know? All right, so again, right down the center, and literally all we're doing is working our way up the head shape. And notice I'm doing palm to palm again. And your hand positioning really is the most important part of this, because here is where we can do one of two things. We can, we can start to build weight and create some graduation. We can start to create some sort of, you know, different type of, of, of shape simply by our finger positioning. You know, if you wanted to build graduation and create a bit more of a weight line, you know, we'd pull the hair out slightly this way to bring everything to that so it'll have that nice rounded effect right into here. This particular haircut, I'm not really looking for a rounded shape. You know, a little bit, but I'm not trying to create a graduated bob at all. I want this to be very textured and have a lot of movement and layering throughout the back of the head. Once again, working palm to palm here. And I really am not at all putting myself in any sort of you know, awkward situation, awkward stance, because one, as you all know, my neck and my back, I'm still uh, dealing with my injury, but also you wanna make sure, just in general, that you're gonna be maintaining a good posture, right? Because that's gonna be really essential for the haircut. All right, so then we're gonna go this way here. So as you see, I'm working up the head shape, right? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually switch position like this, and I'm cutting straight up like that, as you can see. Again, I'm not looking to build any sort of weight line. I'm just looking to create some fullness and some movement right into this area, right into here. As we are getting into the corner, I am gonna start to over direct back slightly because I do wanna maintain a little bit of that length and weight until we cut it out in this, you know, when we get to that part. So I'm gonna comb this all back, right behind the ear area, and just let it kind of fall into its natural state right through here. And look, already you can see we've maintained that strong line. So again, going from the center now to the other side, you know, you can easily stay in the one position and, and keep your body in a good natural state without causing any harm to yourself, you know, because I see a lot of people when performing any sort of layering and things like that, they start to go way over the top. And what happens is they end, you know, you can hurt yourself. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to be cautious to have good body positioning, good posture, and uh, to help be consistent. So now I'm going to go through horizontally right into here, just to kind of cross check to make sure that everything is balanced. You can do this at the end if you want. I like to do it, you know, kind of early on so that we know we're all in a good kind of position. And it's always okay to go back in at any point, especially towards, the, towards even the, the last part of the haircut and go and double check. There's nothing wrong with double checking, <laughs> trust me. You want to be even Steven, then uneven Steven, okay? All right, so also another thing to notice is I'm not using clips. Now that's obviously a bit more advanced, but I'm not using clips simply because I want to try to breeze through this a bit quicker, all right? Not that I'm rushing it, but sometimes I've noticed that it takes longer to, to get the hair out of the way with clips. You know, you can have cut two sections already. So you want to make sure also that the client's head is straight and that it's not too far forward at all because what's going to happen is, remember the client's head, right? Everyone's head is, is, like, is pretty much shaped like this. If you bring the head too far forward, you may cut too far in this way. You may remove part of the shape that needs to actually be part of the haircut. Right? And vice versa, if you have the head too far back, what's gonna happen is it's gonna throw off how the hair is gonna fall. So you really wanna make sure that when you're cutting in this particular area, that the head is not pushed forward. 
or pushed backwards. You want it to be at its natural state and as you know, level as possible for this particular part of the haircut. I know a lot of times people push the hair forward when cutting bobs and things like that, which is okay. You just got to be careful that when they bring their head back and it's put into that natural position, it's going to fall completely differently. Right? You just really, really, really need to make sure of that. And what also could happen is you can start to see uh, inconsistencies in the haircut as well. So make sure that when you're cutting you know, parts that you're, you're not um, cutting things that you know, are, are from a different section. That's why I'm always going in and checking, right? Comb the hair on different angles, like so. And what will happen is you'll notice that any sort of parts of the haircut will jump out at you, especially if it's uneven or if it's not balanced. So as you can see now, I've changed my hand positioning and I'm cutting palm to palm. Whereas this whole section I did uh, over my fingers, right, on top of my fingers. So now I'm going back in and cutting palm to palm. And that's really the key to checking haircuts and making sure that they're gonna last and be well balanced. Because by combing the hair, and I learned this a long time ago, by combing the hair and cutting the hair in different ways, it, you know, it changes it up. It helps give you a different perspective. And hair, you know, sometimes it can be moved you know, one way, it can be brushed another way, they can wake up with something, you know, and, and it may not be perfect. So you may see a slight line of demarcation right through here, or a weight line, I should say. Not anything crazy, but that's totally fine because that is gonna be removed. Right? Remember, we're working up the head shape. So that is weight living on top of here when you comb it straight down, which now is when we're going to really start to focus on that. So there we go. And again, we're going to cut straight up. And the reason we're cutting straight up is because that's the way the hair is growing. If we cut this part up here too short, it's going to really, really leave a solid weight line. So if you're a professional cutting this or a student or whatever, you really need to understand that these hairs on top here, remember, this is what's going to fall. And if it's not cut properly or blended in, you know, that's why you're seeing that line. That's why you're seeing that. But you also need to be careful that you're not cutting it too short because what's going to happen is you'll have a whole new haircut sitting on top of your existing haircut, you know, which you don't want to do because then it, once it's too short, it's like almost like too late, you know? You can't go back in and put that hair back. So it's better, it's better to actually leave, you know, have it a bit longer than have it too short. So now what's happening is I'm seeing this is all working in softly now and perfectly blended in because we got rid of that excess weight line right in through here, which was part of this, all right? So we're working our way up. Again, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to, with a fine tooth comb, <laughs> I'm going to actually really, really pay attention to every single section of hair because that is the most important part of, this, of the entire haircut. You know, going in, cross-checking it, make sure it's all, making sure it's all even, making sure it's all balanced, you know, could be, could be because if we don't do it now, we can go back in and do it later, but, you know, why waste time? Again, as you can see, I'm holding the hair in a different way, which has given me a completely different perspective, and it's allowing me to see the hair from a different angle. Don't be afraid to do this, and don't, skip, don't skimp out on this part of the haircut, I'm telling you. You'll be, save, you'll be thanking me later. Because now what that's doing is it's creating a gorgeous blend, right, a seamless blend from all the way up top here to the bottom. All right, now it's time to connect in through the top, and I've done this in numerous videos. This is the, really the, the most essential part of the haircut. You want the head to be perfectly straight, like this. All right, now let's wait for it, wait for it. There, the, ha the hair is completely fallen, and we're gonna cut straight across. Let that hair fall. Comb it straight down and beautiful. No lines whatsoever, right? If you do see a line, just simply go back in 
and then follow the head shape right here. There it is. There's that little line right there. And bam. So now we've got a perfect flow going from the back all the way to the top, which is really, really, really important. Really important. Because that really is what's connecting. This is the way I like to connect my haircuts. What you don't want to do is, is hold a section up from the top back of the head, and I've said this a million times. You don't want to do that from here because I've done it in the past myself, you will cut a new line in through the haircut. And you don't want to do that. You spent all this time making sure everything is blended and you don't want to have that happen, folks, trust me. Sorry for the lack of focus. It's going in and out because it's picking up the white background. But here is the time where we can totally go in. Again, and, and as you can see, I'm, I'm fairly aggressive with this. You know, don't be afraid, it doesn't have to be perfect, where you have to go back in and section by section. Yes, I'm doing section by section, but I'm doing it in a more aggressive kind of, because you want the hair to move, right? You want the hair to move, you don't want it to be stiff. So that's why if you comb the hair in a similar way of how it's gonna be falling or moving around, that's gonna produce the most natural results. So now we've moved on from the past, and now we're going into the future. So here we are, straight up from the head like this. And this is the, the part of the haircut where I think is gonna be the most crucial. Now, here's where it's gonna be a little bit of a twist, all right? Because I mentioned that I wanna cut shorter to longer, and I wanna maintain the length in the very, very front. So how are we, gonna, are we gonna go about doing that is we're going to maintain this shorter to longer consistency right here. And we're gonna do this as we work all the way to the very front hairline. So essentially what we're doing is we're bringing everything to this one point right here towards the top center of the head and essentially we're over directing. What that's going to do, it's going to allow us to maintain all the length in the front but at the same time remove the weight. So here is the very front right here. We're gonna comb this up. There's a little bit of the hair. Also my elbow here, as you notice, is kind of on an angle this way. I can only go so high because it, the, the uh, my neck, it'll start to kind of hurt my neck. But what you want to do is you want to comb this and maintain that angle right into the very front here. So here we are in the corners, over directing all the way towards the top center. And there we go. Let's go all the way down to the side here, making sure everything is combed straight up this way. And you can see, there's all that weight. We're not removing you know, any length, really. You know, we'll remove that excess length when we have to, when we go in to cut the sides, uh, because we don't want to leave it as long as it is. But what this is doing in the meantime, it's helping us uh, give the hair a little more freedom and flexibility with the layering, all right? And technically, yes, this is layering. This is layering the hair, and what layering does is it removes weight, right? It creates a really good shape. All right, so we're working our way on the opposite side now. And I'm now combing towards the center from the bottom, all right? All the way towards the center here. There's the longest point, again, which is allowing us to maintain the length. So now we're at the very, very side here, combing all this straight up, and there we have it, just a little bit of hair to come off, not a whole lot. Okay, beautiful. So now that we've managed to finish with this, let's bring this hair up a little bit and see what we have going on here. All right, so we're gonna comb this all down. Great, beautiful. We've got some good length left over into here, but as you can see, we still have tons and tons of length right into here, which I necessarily don't want. So let's get rid of it, all right? Let's raise this head up so you can all can see this. We're gonna comb this all down. There's the longest point right into there, all right? As I mentioned, 
There's the length right into there. We're going to, I mentioned earlier, we're going to work our way into this length. You can also do it without your, without holding the hair, you know, totally up to you. And here we go. Beautiful. So now this is acting as kind of like a sweeping fringe right in through here, a sweeping, you know, kind of angle, which is totally awesome. Now, the haircut, let's just show you from the side profile into here. The haircut is not complete, right? It's not complete because we still have to work in through here, right? I didn't remove any weight yet. Well, we did remove weight, but I mean, uh, we didn't remove any of the corners or do anything like that. Because the corners, there's still some heaviness in through here going on. I want to create a bit more movement. And now we're going to work in through the corners and the sides into here. So what's going to happen is you are going to see a bit of a disconnect. And this is where we're going to be blending everything in. Right? This is where we're blending everything in. And we're working into the length. So combing it up. Here is the weight that we need to remove right in through here. And again, working down into the bottom. So the point of all this is to make sure that the hair is not super heavy from this area. Because what's going to happen is it won't have any sort of freedom to move around freely. So now that I'm combing this back down, we can now see a better picture of where this length should be. And perfect. And yes, you're probably going, oh my gosh, why are you, you know, why are you cutting all that hair off? Well, because it's too long to, for me. It's, it's actually prohibiting a lot of movement, in my opinion. There's nothing wrong with leaving all that length. Totally nothing wrong with it. But to me, it's just unbalanced. You know, and I think this is where a lot of haircuts or hairstylists get away with saying, oh, that's part of the haircut. It's very, very, very easy, right? And listen to this, this is very important. It's very, very easy for a hairstylist to leave parts of the hair, you know, on the haircut, or on the head, and then go back in and just simply say, oh, it's part of the haircut. Now, there's nothing wrong with that because, you know, it may create a cool effect or it may, you know, that's the reason he or she wants to do it. But to me, I feel that the haircut is not complete, right? It may look cool for a second, but it's not going to last, right? The haircut is not going to last, like, whatsoever. Because what's going to happen is it's just, you know, it's not going to lay properly over time, which is going to be an issue. And the client shouldn't have to deal with that, to be honest with you. All right, so here we go. Once again, right in through here, making sure it's all balanced, checking to see if uh, even Steven is on or, or if we're dealing with uneven Steven today. <laughs> and you know what? If, if you, even if you are uneven Steven, there's nothing wrong with that, right? There's nothing wrong with, with having the hair a little unbalanced. You know, you just go back in. If it's longer and you cut it shorter, that's it. Nothing wrong with that. We all... We try not to make mistakes, but, you know, sometimes we all make mistakes. All right, so now I'm going into the side here. Again, cleaning up any sort of bits that are longer. Comb this over. So now what I'm going to do is what I call the cleanup. And what you're looking for is any sort of inconsistencies, anything to do that kind of, you know, make a, everything a bit more solid. Everything, everything that's going to help with, you know, getting sort of any flyaways or any longer bits or any, you know, it's really, it's really, really balancing the haircut out. So let's go into the very, very front. <clears throat> so let's check to see our balance right in through here. And we've got this longer bit right down through here. So my, my suggestion is comb this down on an angle this way and an angle this way. So the very, very center is the shortest point. 
which is going to allow the hair to sweep in a few different ways. All right? It can go over this way, you know, or it could go over this way. Cool. So now what I want to do is I want to just go in this way and remove any sort of weight that's prohibiting the hair from moving around. <clears throat> this is what I this is the icing on the cake right through here. Putting the icing on the cake. Again, this is where you have to be a little aggressive. You want to make sure that you're combing the hair in all different directions. <clears throat> now, you may see some areas that are slightly disconnected or not fully blended in, you know, and that's totally, it's fine as long as it works into the haircut, right? You know, you, as long as it's working, it's part of the shape, it's part of your vision, then that's great. Right? So as you can see through here, what I'm doing is I'm now connecting the shorter to longer parts over this way. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to go in and we're going to cut to make sure. And, and I could feel on this side, <clears throat> it was slightly longer right down and through here. So what do we do? There it is. We go back and we get rid of it. All right, just get rid of it because it's just going to prohibit the haircut from moving freely like it's supposed to. My joke is, when in doubt, cut it out. <laughs> but then the problem is you can end up looking like me, and you don't want your clients or yourself to, to look like that. <laughs> All right, so once again, combing it in a variety of different ways. Now I'm doing palm to palm, just really to make sure everything is all connected and blended in. The only way you're going to see this and find any sort of, I call them, yeah, mistakes, or if you really comb through this whole thing and cut. You can comb the hair in a variety of ways. Let's comb this out horizontal. And look for any sort of inconsistencies. And that will tell us how we're doing. And there we go. All right, so let's blow dry this and we'll come back and see what it looks like. Okay, so here is the result from the blow dry and I used a uh, flat wrap technique, which is but not a new technique. It's been around probably since the 70s and I've used it in uh, many, many of my videos. So in case you come across a video saying it's a new technique, it's not. So what that does is it helps lay the hair flat down. It helps work the natural pattern in. Also, it helps really just lay the hair flatter to the head, to be honest with you, all right? And um, so you're not getting too much volume. It's, it's literally flat wrapping, so it's making it flatter to the head. So what we're gonna do now is I'm going to use my thinning shears here, and I'm just going to remove a lot of weight. Again, this mannequin head has quite a bit of hair, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm literally just going in here and here's all that hair coming off. So what I'm doing is I'm really focusing on the mid shaft to the ends of the hair. I'm not really going down to the scalp because I'm not trying to make the hair look thinner from the scalp area. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to really remove any sort of you know, heaviness or areas of the haircut that will be throwing the haircut off, making it not so movable and uh, textured. Like, as you can see into this area, it's very, very heavy still. So we're going to go in and there we go. We're moving the weight. Also, what this does is it really helps. Um, it helps give the hair a lot more uh, f flexibility. And if your hair is really, really heavy, you got to make sure that one, this is, this does not work well with somebody who's got really curly hair. <laughs> to be honest with you, this is really better for people who have like more of a, of a straighter hair type, simply because, and it also uh, straight, but also th on the thicker side, because simply what, what's happening is it's, uh, here we go, it's allowing the hair to have a lot more flexibility and movement. So let's bring this all back, shake the hair up. So if you're a professional working on a client, you know, what you want to do is you want to get rid of all that excess hair right in through here. And as you can see, this is purely 
let's back up a little bit. There we go. Purely from the haircut, right? I've gone in here. Let's take a side profile, right? What we've done is we've created a nice kind of angle right down into here. And it's got a lot of movement, a lot of texture to it. As you can see, really, really nice shape. Let's go into the back here. What I love about the back is that it's pretty much seamless. There's no lines of demarcation. You've got all this great texture, this great volume right in through here. Just balance this part out right here. And again, I mentioned there's nothing wrong with if you come across parts that are a bit longer, right? Um, that are a bit more imbalanced. This is the time to do it, right? This is the time to do it. Nothing to be ashamed of. It just means that you didn't catch it when it was being done. So I felt this was a little bit long, a little bit heavy into here. And what I simply did is I went back in and cleaned it right up. And you can do it in a variety of ways. You can point cut, you can you know, hold it straight with your hands or whatever it is. But I've mentioned that the hair will jump out at you. Hair likes to talk. It'll, it'll show you if, it's, if there's something going on. <laughs> you know, I always like to say that. So now you see I'm doing the scissor over comb freehand. Go back on this side here. And there we have it, guys. This is a really a gorgeous haircut. I love all the shape, the movement it's got. You know, you can wear this if you want in the face. You can wear a side parting like this, which I really like. I really like this side part. To me, this is a very sexy kind of haircut. I love a woman who has a haircut like this where it's, you know, even though it's short, it doesn't look super short. It's still got some, you know, uh, a real feminine touch to it, which is awesome, right? Which I really, really, really love. And also, check this out. Let's go on the other side here. Let's flip the hair and part it on the other side. Because we've cut the layers into here, it's almost uh, identical to what we did on the other side, which is allowing and creating for that movement, okay? Really, really nice. So that is pretty much it. Now I may get some questions if you're a guy watching this and you're asking if you can wear this haircut. I mean, you can. I'd say it's a bit more on the feminine side, which if you want that, that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You can, you can totally wear this if you're a guy, if you're in kind of more of a, you were looking for like a scene look, if you're in a band, uh, you want something with a little more edge, you want something that just sweeps all across the face. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with wearing this haircut if, uh, if you're a guy. See, it kind of sweeps all the way over. You know, if you want this haircut, I'd probably, and if, if you were a dude, I'd probably just get rid of this angle through here. So it's a lot more of a sweeping type look. But if you like that longer texture right through here, go for it. It's nothing to say that you can't wear this. You know, it's pretty much a unisex haircut. But anyway, guys, don't forget to check out again the combs I have. I've got the red one and also the white one. Check them out. They're now available for sale. Uh, again, free shipping in the United States. But don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you thought of this haircut. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time for more videos with the Slanga.